I swear. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Um, there's nothing, uh, for one, I do apologize for the lateness of the agenda. Obviously, uh, there was a small storm, and um, most of the village staff were involved in that, including you know, the supervisor, myself, and the village clerk. So uh, we should wait for the clerk, because we have to have her legally here to start. Hey, Katie. Jeez. Right here. There sorry. she is. I'm sorry. You're not, no. no. It's not you. I, I started and forgot. I didn't realize you were here. Um, Thank you. No, I think Susan and I got everything. Uh, but is there anything else to add to the agenda tonight? Yes, Don Kerr's public access recommendation. Well, that was got, that actually was purposely not put on to be put on for our our we next subsequent meetings. Okay. Yeah. Um, I did. And what about? I thought planning to be here. Sorry. Did you need to ask him the three times, or then that would be what's the well? Uh, he wasn't adding the agenda, agenda so not sure what. We need to ask three times. Are we talking about for next year? On if he shows up, we'll I, oh, I believe that uh, supervisors have meant to contact me. If, 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 if it requires us to, to sit it's and done. read and, and, and get back on something, we probably don't have time to do with it tonight. Um, so is there anything else ready to go? Because we've only got an hour and a half before the town has to meet. All right, good. So I guess I will move to approve the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, does anyone know where, um, well, Susan and, uh, well, is Ariana still in? Oh, Ariana's still in. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Su anyone heard from Susan? I hear her. Okay. Let's we'll move on then. Um, I think you can, don't they have to make their own individual motions and motions oh. and seconds and all that? Just, well, just for the sake we, we of, all voted for the sake of yeah. Yeah. Everybody yeah. voted aye. All so. aye. Town aye. And so let's just assume but, the who would like to take it? Who would like to make the motion? There you go. I make a motion that the town board accept the agenda. Second. Tonight. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Thank you, Kitty. <clears throat> all right. The, uh, that's it then, public comment. Oh, yeah. The, so uh, um, these comments are for the uh, town board, but they'll be quick. So um, I'd like to comment on, on a budgetary matter, and that's uh, the matter of the $11,000 about raise for uh, the stipend portion of the raise for Susan Zimmett. And uh, first of all, I'd like to say I'm livid about this, as many other people are. First, that uh, she would have, or that a elected official would have the gall to ask for a raise relatively early in the term, and such a large raise at that. And second, that the town board would approve this raise. Uh, Susan, as any supervisor, was hired knowing what the job would be, and doing a good job is what it entails, so uh, a raise should not, for doing the job, one shouldn't get a raise. Uh, everyone else is hired to do a good job, as uh, the supervisor is. And uh, the, the um, I guess it makes me even more livid, and other people, because uh, in the present economic climate, it really seems out of line to ask for such a raise. Um, if the supervisor believes that good performance warrants such a raise, I think likewise poor performance perhaps should be penalized. So what I, uh, following this line of reasoning, I suggest setting certain high goals that must be met, and then working out penalties if it's not met. Uh, the board is obviously, I think, out of touch with the townspeople they represent. If you just have, you just have to read the letters in the paper, and you can see the shock and outrage at the, uh, at the very idea of such a raise, of any raise at this point. Uh, looking forward, I'd like to know specifically and have it reported more uh, widespread uh, which uh, town board members specifically voted for this raise, the stipend raise, not, not the other raise. I and I'd also like to know if there's any way this raise can be stopped. And uh, also, how long is this raise for the full term? It's it's for this year and for next year. So it's retroactive for this year, okay. and uh, it will extend into 2013. So I guess my one of my main points is if there's any way that this could be reversed, I would like to know how that can be done. Petition. Or uh, I, guess it could, I, guess, I mean, I guess it could be no, no popular, but uh, we need to move on because we're here for. But it would have to. We could discuss this. If you want to wait for the town meeting, but uh, it would. Uh, it could be brought up again as a budget line to reduce that budget line. 
I think we propose to reduce the budget, the supervisor's budget line, which is mm -hmm. on the side of the budget, which we could discuss, in a, in, you know, prior to the budget okay. being adopted. And would that be today would be discussed? Or we could. could. And the, so the, at 8 o'clock would be the, the uh, town board part of the meeting? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, well, I'm going to try and return at that point. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for uh, having me. You're welcome, speak. Lee. Bye, Dan. Mark or Ira, you got anything for public comment? All right. Um, I think let's skip the announcements for, t well, actually, no, I, I have one. Uh, I have one. Go ahead. Um, Mohawk Consultations is hosting an alternative energy conference Monday, November 12th at Mohawk Mountain House from 9 to 4 p.m., 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, there will be speakers on geothermal, solar, wind, biofuel, NYSERDA will be there. And um, you can learn more about how to register at mohawk-consultations.inc. Thanks. Any others? All right, I, I have one, the obvious one. Um, you know, we dodged a really big bullet again with Hurricane Sandy. Um, a lot of people don't know how big a do bullet we dodged with Irene, but the, um, I mean, the pictures down from New York City, I think, tell a lot for us here. Um, there's going to be some letters, I'm sure, and some articles in the paper, and of course we have to thank, as always, you know, Chief Snyder and the town police, Chief Dugatkin and the SUNY police, President Bassinet and the rescue squad, Chief McGuire and the fire department, uh, Superintendent Terwilliger and the village DPW, and Supervisor Marks in the town highway. And um, but there's a couple other people that I think, well, put it to you this way. We have a lot of people in the community, all the people I just named and the people who work for them, who have chosen to spend their careers in emergency services. And we train them well, and they're incredibly um, gifted people who put their own lives aside to make ours better and make sure we're safe in an emergency. But there's a couple other people who stepped forward when called, um, who didn't have training, who'd never been part of an emergency operations center. Um, and I think that they deserve um, to be known. One, two of them here at the table, um, Deputy Mayor Rhodes and, and Councilman Jeff Logan, who were called to set up an alternate site here at Village Hall. Uh, for any of you who in Irene uh, made a phone call last year um, and got routed to Village Hall to find out where the shelter was or where you can find blankets or what roads were closed, um, we put uh, Sally and Jeff in charge of that site and they already had things lined up and organized, ready to go. Thankfully, we didn't have to pull that trigger, but thank you both for stepping up for that. Um, and also, I'd like to publicly thank um, KT Tobin and Craig Shankles, who were the first of, I think, half a dozen people who called me back uh, when I reached out to find public information officers people who could just focus on getting the information out to the public while the rest of us dealt with the, the crisis. And they both really rose to the occasion. They were in every EOC meeting, as were Jeff and Sally, and really stepped up. Um, and if any of you saw that blog, the Emergency Operations Center blog, you have KT uh, and Craig to thank for that and all the information that went out. Um, finally, I think that, as Mayor Bloomberg has said, I don't think there's any doubt that climate change accelerated or amplified the storm that we had, which means that um, this isn't going away and we'll be doing an EOC again and again and again. And um, <clears throat> because of that, I guess I'd like to, mostly for anyone who's watching at home, if any of you watching when you were five years old ever wanted to be a firefighter or a paramedic, it's time. Um, we need your help, we need you in the fire department, we need you in the rescue squad, we need you volunteering. Um, and next time we're in one of these emergencies and your lights are out, think about the people who are racing around in the dark trying to make, get those lights turned on and make sure people are safe, and, uh, and you could be one of them, and we need your help. So please call, and please volunteer, because the storms are gonna get worse, our responses are gonna get better, but there's always gonna be things we miss, and we could use more hands. So I guess with that, we had a fantastic drill, because it was exactly uh, uh, risk enough that it had to be taken deadly seriously, but it was a beautiful night, and we got a perfect, perfect practice round for our EOC. Um, and the last person to, to thank, uh, again, who probably doesn't get enough thanks, is the, the, one of the roles we have is the, to, uh, to run the EOC operations center itself. And both in Irene and, and Sandy, um, that role is filled by Gail Gallery. So if you see her on the street, uh, please shake her hand, give her, give her some thanks. Um, because she did, she did a phenomenal job, just to, as did everyone else. So um, thank you very much. And unless there's another announcement. Can you add one more thanks for the uh, yeah. parade, too? Because that was just beyond belief. To get the, what, that the parade happened? Yeah. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, thanks the to the Lions Club, to David Santner, the bakery, who's doing and some this, of the same this night. Volunteers that didn't see yeah, and we really, people just it dropped what they could and, and really made sure <clears> the week went <throat> off as smoothly as possible. Thank you. Um, Stuart, you had something else? Just a, a, a point of information. Our 
Um, we have with our packets the draft minutes from the last two meetings. Is that on the agenda for us to yeah. adopt those, or, or do Let's we ever adopt that. these ever? We, should, we do. Let's take that as given. Um, add that to the agenda. <coughs> Minute, the minutes, approval of minutes. All right. Um, I guess let's do if kind of with your permission. I think I'm guessing that under new business, the water meters and the fire contract are probably the no brainers. Um, and we can knock those out of the way first. I know I can explain briefly the water meters are a project that the village done back in 03 to 07 um, to buy water meters for the town um, because we replaced ours then. So that money has been sitting there unused all these years. So we'd like, basically we're offering to buy water meters for the town, um, town system um, for accurate, more accurate things for you and buildings for us, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, I don't know, you know as we put in our budget last year, because this was quite a discussion. Mm -hmm. So we, and actually we put in money for the budget for the exact meters that you have already purchased. So we would be paying the village to do the reading because for the vehicle to drive around, it would be going to be able to read it. It, uh, it would be, I believe it would include a laptop, which we already have, or it would be I something that think just so. one of your uh, highway guys would have to, to get the software as well. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I know we have it in the budget. It was a contentious wow. issue and we, when it, it passed that we were going to buy the meters. Right. So but for this year, we would just need to figure out what it's going to cost so we can put it in each line. Or do you want to, do you, because the village I think has already approved this yeah, ahead of time, so we can just kick this to your meeting at 8 and you guys can figure out whether you want these but or not. We it's, just it's need to you. know, I mean, do, do you have an estimate year. of what it costs to Well, basically meters? it's what it's going to save for the town. Right. But we have to put a number in our, because what our, our, our plan, Nancy has our, our information for And our plan was to pay the, I plan was last year was to pay the village to then go and read our meters for that, us. Be, yeah. that was going to be part of the, the <coughs> deal was because you guys have the software <coughs> top already that drives around I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah so yeah. the new ones have a radio signal just broadcast the number. And that's what we were we put in our budget to purchase and that was uh, now when it was purchasing it is since retired but I don't I don't think the purchase was ever made or not though. No. I, I so the, so what's interesting is actually we do have money in our budget under a line to purchase from this year's budgets from 2012. We do have money that we mm -hmm. have collected well, from check, our well, district. I guess check because there could yeah. be other, because you have so many water districts, it could be that yeah. there were some that were, I don't know, that, that could be district, yeah. I don't know. Okay. Good, I, no. But I think we... The answer is yeah, yeah, we're definitely interested. <laughs> okay. I would like to move from, or no, uh, we did all. We, we did, did ours. ours. They, and, yeah. Basically, Jeff, yep. what you need to do is just to move to approve the town developing with the village an electronic water meter system for the town. It's going to save you a half line of a person and oh, a oh. lot of bookkeeping costs. Absolutely. And then just authorize the whoever's on your side, Nancy and whoever, to work out the process of how we're going to do it. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Susan. So is that right to ta table it to the town board? Yeah, we'll do yeah, it. I'm not table, but uh, yeah, refer no. it to the town board. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Well, then they can do it at their meeting later if they want, if they, yeah. if they have more to hash on. That's all. Shouldn't take very long. I'd do it now. It's a joint meeting, and it's on yeah. the joint meeting agenda. So would you like us to make a motion yeah. that uh, the town accept, I'd like to make a motion that the town accept the water meters from the village of New Paltz? And Second. the supervisor and the village treasurer will work out the process and the plan. Second. That's how we say. All in favor? Aye. 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 Beautiful. Thank you very much. Uh, the second one that's quick, I think the fire protection contract, I don't know how in the loop you've been. I have no there have been some that. well there have been some back and forth on, on new ideas between the village and the company. What we came to is what the village and the company would like to propose is we just change the numbers to be relevant to the year we're in but in other, in other cases keep all the same language identical as the last few we've had and then have a meeting in february um with all the, the primary the players around the table and do it in one session you know if we can but go over all the ideas for improvements and with the thought of having that done by the village budget season and then the start of the fiscal year in june so rather than drag this contract out we sign this one in the old terms start start over with the new contract when uh since this was already expired and it'll give us more breathing room and time okay. to, to get it done. We all got an email from Susan today saying that she had a new contract with the new numbers in it that it, she had printed. Yeah. It's basically and the same numbers in the old contract. It's a rollover. Yeah. What we're doing it's is suggesting the same as last year. Same as last year. Same <clears throat> the roll, our last year's contract to this year, 
and starting in February of 2013, the, the town and the village and the fire company and the fire department all sit down together at one time and work out any of the differences. Mm -hmm. And we, need that's, to work yeah, we um, and I will we move it. Have, I believe. No, we didn't. Right. Well, I will move it on the village side. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, is that amenable to the three of you? I, I, I don't. I can't vote on it because I don't know. If we're, are we talking about the numbers in Joe Moriello's memo to us? That no, we're talking about the. the one um, on this one. It's all it is. Is all it is is the is the, the current fiscal year, the current fire that. department's budget divided out in the same old formula. And the, change the date. Oh, That's the only thing that changed minutes. in the contract. I don't. You should yeah, have it. Right okay. Do you have this? No. I have a question about the. Oh, payment. I'm sorry. Jason, there here. Four A says the town should pay the village in two installments. Mm hmm. Fifty percent of what? Uh, the total consideration due from the town. Which it's is, so late. Is, they which hear is the though. which is the town's portion of the. Which is calculated at some future date. It's in the. It's actually in the contract right under uh, budget of oh, no, I'm sorry. It's under, um, no, here it is. I think it's 249 $251,844.61 uh, in two installments. But, but that's, that was if this had been signed in time. This, this expired May 31st of this year. And for the town side, it will expire December 30th, 2012 because your budget is over. So it'll have to be paid in one installment. Well, this says that the term is June 2012 to May 31st, 2013. Uh-huh. Right? That's the current contract. So, um, so we're just going to roll it, getting one more year. And then but we... The balance will be due immediately. In the whole, that, 100%. Which is what you would have voted us anyway if this was signed right. in June. So. But we I haven't made any payments this year? No. No. Because no. we, we had a contract. contract. That's not your fault. That's, this is why we want to get this signed, get the books cleared off, and rather than get this tangled in other issues, we can just... Some years it's been much later than this. Yeah. Um, no, it hasn't. I just remember getting this on our agenda and making a motion to pay, to get this check paid, but for that could have been last year. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so... Um, so it's, no, it's the right, same kind of the year ago. I make a motion that the... Town uh, enter into a fire protection contract with the village in the amount of two hundred fifty-one thousand eight hundred forty-four dollars and sixty cents to expire in May on May thirty-first, twenty thirteen. I I'll second. I'll second it for discussion purposes. Uh, what I would like to do is I would really like to handle our part of it during the second part of this session okay. for the town board so we have more information. Okay, I withdraw the motion and we'll, I'll do it later. Can we do that? Sure. All right. Yeah. Perfect, because I can't open the PDF, she said. It's, it okay. doesn't open. Yeah, it's it's not a the one she said. The one she said. No, I, I, I see that. Okay. I just want to make sure we understand that we're paying $251,000 tomorrow. You have it in your budget. Right. Yeah. Well, I know we have 243. Okay. In I just want to. But, okay. So we have Moriola Pool and the Rusty Squad, both from the town. Where yeah. is our supervisor? I'll agree to that. Does anybody what we're talking about? about, as long as it's settled Kevin, tonight. Are you able and to check this? I got a call to be here at 6.30. It's yeah. Seven, that so was I don't, I don't Kevin. know. Kevin. Excuse me. I'm happy to agree with that, as long as you all take care of this tonight and the check is in the mail. I, I don't have a problem taking care oh, of it okay. tonight. I just need more input. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, because we're you're yeah. ending the fiscal no year. Yeah, no All right. Well, okay. we have uh, expenditures and balances in our packet, so assuming the money is there, I don't think there will be a problem. They have a lot of paper to look through to find it. Well, so we'll hopefully hear this evening. So, yeah. yep, yeah. Moriela Pool and uh, the rest of it are from the town. Just one of the three of you able to fill us in on the the, the ten second. The elevator speech version of these? The elevator speech version is we anticipate a $60,000 net operating loss this year, this coming year. For which? For 2013. For the, the, the pool. And we're asking the village to split the operating loss with us. How is it different than paying it from the A fund? Uh, I, 
I mean, isn't it just Apple? I mean, well, what would it so we, would the, we would put the uh, the expenses for it would go on to the B side then, and we would just split the the yeah. loss on it, whatever it may be. No, no, but uh, okay. Uh, the difference on the A Let me rephrase it? my question. Yes. Um, if the if the end result is village and town taxpayers equally uh, equally sharing the burden of the losses for the pool, mm -hmm. that's status quo. Because if it's operating on a loss, paid out of the A fund, the village residents pay those taxes. So, so I'm paying, I'm already paying my share of the losses. What, what, what benefit is it to the two governments to have those, the, the, the expenses and losses split into two different budgets rather than kept in one? Because well, the loss, effectively for the public, it makes no difference at all. It makes a huge difference because the loss on the village side is only 25 cents in the dollar. So you're gaining on your loss. The village tax assessment is less than the town. So you're only paying on the A side, you're only paying about a quarter of every dollar. So if we split it 50-50, then you're paying 50 cents on the dollar, and we're paying 50 cents That's on the dollar. That's not how the way A1 works for individual programs. Yes, it does. Yeah, it does. Sure. Sure it does. Absolutely. Well, what, what am I confused about then? I'll figure that out later. Yeah, but um, that's, I mean, yeah, because I, I apologize. I, I assume, we assume the information was sent over, so I don't want to try. The, the point being is that the, you know, and, and you guys can let us know how you feel, is that, you know, the pool runs, the village and the town jointly run the pool. Uh, we take care of, so to speak, the operations and capital expenses. We've had a great year. I mean, you know, we sat down with Stu and Ariana, and we, you know, if you haven't been to the pool, it's incredible. I mean, you know, it looks beautiful. I, no, I understand. So we're definitely happening. moving ahead a lot. So what we're just trying to do, though, now is to kind of keep moving forward, is that we actually do share all the expenses equally, instead of just and for us taking well, I mean, part but, but hold on, hold on, hold on, because yeah. the other thing is, is, and, you know, I don't say this in a no, whatever, but it seems... I have to admit, my first reaction is a little bit skeptical because what it sounds like to me is the pool has been badly managed and running on a loss, and now the town is coming to the village for a bailout, basically. Well, and I you, want us to pay, you want us to pay more of a share of the loss than we did have to have the wait, 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 hold, let me finish what I have to say. Yep. It sounds to me, and please tell me what, what I'm, like I said, what I'm missing, because okay. it sounds and looks on the surface like we're being asked to pay a larger proportion of the loss that we had no role in creating. And I'm not, I'm not saying that's necessarily even a bad thing, right. but it, as a it, it responsibility down. question, I feel I have to ask it because why is it at a loss? And, would you, and, would, you be coming to, and would you be coming to split the cost if it was running at a profit? Well, it all comes down to how you view, and I said the yeah. same thing yeah. to Sally, how do you view government? Is government here to provide for what people can't provide for themselves? The answer is yes. Recreation programs. They run at a loss. Why? Because we need to provide recreation. So if we take the summer rec program, we're providing daycare for children for working parents. The pool, it runs at a loss because we're providing a service they can't, other people can't use. If you feel that this needs to be a profit-making venture or a break-even venture, I will just philosophically I'm going to disagree with you. I think there's certain things we need to do that for our community that do run at a loss. Absolutely. For me, rec so that there's your answer. Recreation would be one in the pool. So it's not poor management. I, I take offense to that remark when you say it's being mismanaged. It's not being mismanaged at all. Our operating expenses were actually less this year than they were in the previous year. Bill has done everything possible to keep that pool running as tight as a budget as possible. Right. And it's going to run at a loss. Now, philosophically, if you think that's wrong, I, I'm sorry, and then we can meet about that, but Oh, you know, if you're going to raise the it's rates, what's going to happen? If you're going to raise the rates, you're going to start. We're, we're already getting to a point where you're pricing people out. People have to make that choice. I mean, believe it or not, there's people that write checks, and it's difficult for them. They have to. They actually pay when they first start coming in the daily fee because they even say to them at the gate, "I'm sorry, I don't have the money right now. They don't have, they don't have. the three hundred and twenty-five dollars to buy a family membership up front. They have to wait sometimes. They go, "Well, I'm not paid for another two weeks," and that's where we're at. And it's that is increasing every year. Our membership is going up every year because more and more people are not vacationing out of their community. Mm -hmm. It's becoming a huge, huge draw. Now we made more money this year. We actually opened up a little bit earlier this year. We opened during that heat wave. So I, again, I can go either way. I mean, you know, so will we coming to you as a profit? Well, it's never run at a profit. None of our recreation programs have ever run at a profit. So when I come to you and say, hey, it's running at a profit, we're gonna spill over. I, I don't know, Jason, uh, odds are no, obviously not because we say, hey, it's working fine running at a profit, the profit would instantly be eaten by any upgrades we haven't done at the pool. This year, we, we're down to one slide. We need to make a hard decision that we want to spend. And it's not six, $9,000 for a slide. If we want to get a slide, we're going to spend fifteen, seventeen thousand dollars 
that's a choice that both these boards need to make. And, and I want us to make that. Right. You know, is this something that we want to invest in the community? We're, I think we're fortunate to have two pools in our community, on you know, the county pools here, and we have our community pool, and a lot of communities don't have it. Rosendale might not have one again next year. You know, and that's, yeah. so, uh, I mean, it's just my, this is my take Brian, on it. Brian, you were waiting. Yeah, I apologize. So Brian first. Two things, so one, um, I'd like, with everyone's permission, to um, limit the discussions to two minutes each, and then uh, a 30 second rebuttal, if we all allow it. Would um, anyone? I'd actually, think? at this point, probably not, not because I think seven be more. I think we're fine. More, yeah. it'd take, you know, more time than it saves. Okay, but it's seven thirty. We have to start to consolidate. Yeah, no, exactly. Discussion. So we've got half an hour to finish two topics. Okay. All right. So that would be the first thing. So if you don't want to do that? That's fine. Um. So I guess the second thing would say, um. Have, have you ever used the pool, Jason? Sorry. Have you ever used the pool? Sure. Really? Mm -hmm. I've never been swimming at the pool. Um. It's, uh, you know, not often, but you know. Yeah, I mean, well, we don't I, have kids. Uh, that's a big. Well, that's that's you know, true as well. Too. I mean, um, for me personally, I think there are a lot of programs that are important to um, have for a community and a lot of shared services. And I, and I personally think the role of government is more to pr protect the public um, from things they can't protect themselves from, um, as opposed to maybe offering programs and. Um, at the end of the day, you know, the, the pool, you, you could say it has been mismanaged, but I don't think it's ever run even or not at a large deficit. I mean, the fact is, this year, you say you've had um, less of a deficit, which, you know, that's a good thing, We're getting on track. But at the end of the day, like, you know, if, if I were in the pool, which obviously I'm not, um, I would try to make it break even because I think it's it's important. It, I don't think there's really a, a reason to run into deficit. Maybe I don't understand the logistics of it, but also I think that something that you guys should consider is that if if you're in charge of operations and you want to split it 50-50, then maybe we should be sharing the operational decisions as well. I think that's been a concern for uh, a lot of members of the village board. I don't I don't know how the rest of you feel, but I think we've discussed it at points or at least individually we have. So that would be my contribution to it. I'm sorry, you were my waiting. contribution is that we do pay for the pool through the A fund. So those taxpayers are paid an equal amount to town taxpayers in terms of the A fund. And to ask the village to split it 50-50 when the village tax base is about 27% of the town A fund, I don't call that a good deal. <laughs> Okay, so if you're proposing that we help you by absorbing 27% of your loss, I might be willing to discuss that, but I'm not willing to discuss a 50-50 break in an operation that the village has already paid its share for and is being asked to pay again. Then I think it should be proportioned over the tax base total mm -hmm. of the eight fund. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You've been working on the finance committee. I've understood that for You've been working on the finance committee, haven't you? <laughs> and, 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 well, in the 2011, whether people want to agree or not, 2011, the, the county pool, I mean, the town Morella pool was operating at $49,000 revenue and an expense of $350,000 on the expenditure so, side. So, so, if you're talking about providing members of the community with something that's positive with all the money we spend on all the other stuff we spend money on sixty thousand dollars to provide a pool for our residents for the summer sixty thousand is not cheap. a correct figure it's cheap that's the deficit that's, that's not the, the cost. That's your deficit that's your deficit net, not your cost no the net cost to us is only 60. we take in 131 and we have to pay out 190. So the net cost is only 60. You have family memberships, 184 from the town, 92 from the village. The, the memberships amount to about 40% of the total revenue. Daily admissions are 51,993. Swim instruction, 11,229. So $60,000 with all the money we spend on stuff, to give people a place to go in the summertime that don't have a place to go, kids that are cooped up in these apartment buildings, 
And you know, some don't even have air conditioning. I think sixty thousand dollars is a joke when it comes to providing our community with an opportunity. It's the cheapest recreational opportunity we have in our town. Okay. Again, I'm not going to get you. Can we just go around? But my point is, but, but, I was talking. Oh, so we it's not the responsibility around. of wanting to run the Moriella Pool. Okay, it's in the jo A It's jointly the owned. Fund. It's jointly owned. That is not the contract that is currently maintained between the town. There is no contract, it's Sally. Key. There is a contract. Not, not in place. It certainly is. We've moved it to end this year. So don't. All right. So we found that. But my point it's is, it's either we're going to have a pool or we're not going to have a pool. That's going to be your decision. No, Kevin. It is your decision. May I ask one and question? what I'm saying is, yeah. if I may finish my time, time. Mm -hmm. Is excuse that me, excuse me. No, please well, I, but no, I thought sorry, we were going to have conversations please, please back and forth until Sarah? everybody. I've lost. Excuse me, uh, Kitty. I'm the one running this meeting. Please okay, don't interrupt right, people. So this side Sally, of the table gets to talk. Sally okay. was in the middle of something, responding to questions from Kevin. Your turn is next. Just please wait. That's all. Okay, and then My I just point. get to continue. My only point is that if you want the village to share in this on a 50-50 sort of basis or proportion down through the tax base of the A fund, then I think we get joint operation with you. And it cannot be the town operating it and then coming and say, it's a wonderful recreation program and you please pick up our deficit. That's all I'm saying. Can you please? Okay. So did the joint committee talk about this model at all? No. Hmm? No. Not, not, we didn't, Stuart, we didn't Ariana. flush out this, this okay. model. We, so, we took care of emergency things. Okay. Two, two or three issues, they were paramount. We dealt with those, okay. they've been dealt with. So now we're on step two, which we can right. really talk about. So the joint committee hasn't had a chance no. to weigh in on this. Well, I am <coughs> very fine with um, alternating uh, management of the pool each year. If the village would like to, to be responsible for operations next year, we share the expense. We share the revenue, and let's alternate management. I, I think that's a great idea, Sally, and I would support that. Well, I was, I was talking about shared management Well, I think year. that, you know, we have too many cooks in the kitchen that way. But whatever model you would propose, I, I think that would, I mean, I would be very happy to let the village manage this next year if we can come to an agreement about the financial role here. Well, first, I just have to apologize for being late because I thought the meeting was 6.30, but when we checked the village website, it said 7, it said 7 o'clock, so I thought it got pushed back. We went back and forth a bunch on the conversation. Okay, so we looked at this website, I said, yes, it's 7, and I should have called to check because I knew we said 6.30, so I was getting everything ready for today's meeting. I have the ambulance stuff, and so, so that's what we have. Um, just a couple things with Moro Pool um, in terms of the thought process. Just first, A, if you look back through the minutes of the two boards, what the minutes say, and I'm not... It's not disparaging in any way, I'm just saying what the minutes say. Um, when you go back and look, it says the village chose to pull out of recreation and will no longer support townwide recreation, okay? So how that decision was made, I don't know. I'm just saying what the, I'm just saying what the, it basically says the village chose not to be a part, okay? So we can't go back and create past history. Um, when um, we were sort of working on this, at a certain point, I, and I had talked to everybody individually on the village board about the thought process behind um, um, the um, Royal Pool, where at one point the town wanted, the town board had directed me to just split the costs and split the revenues and just put, you know, half in and let you pick up the other half. And if you chose not to, then, you know, maybe the pool wouldn't open next year or whatever. When Gene and I were working on the budget together, we sort of felt like, in a way, um, you know, it would be better if we sort of tried to work as a way to work a solution out together. And so what we did was we put in the total expenses, but we took the $60,000 loss and sort of said that maybe because we both own the pool, you know, that we should basically um, um, split the loss. That sort of felt a little fair. And then when I was talking to individual board members from the village board, Jason had a lead when I had come in to find him to talk to him about it, but I had gotten um, um, Stuart and Ariana. And Stuart and Ariana had brought up the concern about, well, if we're going to share the loss, we want to have a say on the operations. And so one of the ideas we came out with that I'd like to throw on the table as a discussion point 
was that we did create a subcommittee of Stuart and Ariana and Jeff and Kevin, and they have been getting together and they have been working out the problems, and we haven't had the kind of issues that we've had in the past. Now, again, sometimes it's the people, and we can't always guarantee who the people are going to be in the future, but we talked about possibly in our organizational meetings for both the village and the town, creating a subcommittee of two people from the village, two people from the town, that are responsible for the operations of the pool. So it's the town and the village working together through a subcommittee for the operations. They come to the agreement, and then they bring it back to the two boards, with hopefully both boards supporting the work of their two people they picked. And in this way, you know, we're sort of, you know, in a way the town is sort of still operating in a way, you know, in terms of our personnel, you know, that, you know, we're using and whatever. But you have the town and village taking a joint ownership, joint operations, and joint decision making and splitting the loss. So right now the way the budget is developed, at least for the town budget, is we have all the expenses in here, but we have $30,000 um, that we're, you know, of the loss that we're eating, and we haven't shown us like either, I can't remember if it's $30,000 of potential revenue coming in from the village, or you, I think it's $30,000 of potential revenue coming in from the village to offset the loss. So that's right now how it's being developed, and that was the thought process of talking to individual board members from the village board after you know, I went back to the town board and explained what Gene and I thought was the right way to go, and then came and had individual meetings with you guys, so you sort of knew what the conversation was. Yes, so Are we talking about the loss this past year, or a, a projected year. loss for the future? 2013. Hmm? 2013. I think, that's about, I think that is about the, the course, the loss. Um, I think that, some of you might be better, though, who, I mean, Jeff, is that but, sort of so, I mean, listen, I, and, I, and I do want to hear what Kitty has to say, but just so we all have relative numbers. So one is, and again, I, I, mean, I think that's the, the, role of, the role of government is to provide services, and for people can't provide for themselves, whether you see it as protection or recreation, that's why we have government in the United States. If you look at the county, the county runs at a loss of about eighty-five to $90,000 every year. So if you think just us, if it's poor management, please call the county, tell them they're managing their pool wrong too, because they're not. The county is providing a service and they understand it. If you want to take it and break even and make back to sixty thousand dollars, you are going to make our debt you're going to make us raise the rates. I'm gonna say us, it's everyone sitting at this table, plus both boards, you'd have to go up about a hundred and fifty dollars to $175 on a family membership and our daily rate would have to go up probably about four or five dollars. That would put it out of reach. There is not, the people that are using that pool, and I know many of them, I work very deeply down at that pool with that staff. Do I use it a lot? I honestly don't. But go ahead and ask anyone down there. I'm down there a lot. I go down there and I help them, many activities down there. And you're talking about raising rates to $400 for someone that can't even afford daycare? for people that have trouble putting food on their table. To me, that is, it's uncomprehensible that you would even have a debate in your mind that one of the greatest recreational opportunities in this community, the swimming pool, where families all go down there, and you'll see the same families every day down there, that we can't afford as a community to provide that to our community. Number one killer of children in the United States is guess what? Drowning. We teach so many kids here to swim. We are truly doing something to save lives. And to think that you can't take this and share a loss for this, I find, I, I find both sad and disappointing. Well, all right, now let's stop Thank there, you. please. Let's just stop. I'd like I'm sorry. My no, I'm sorry, stop yep. there, please. The hyperbole and the, the exaggeration is not helping the conversation. What exaggeration was in there? I gave you the dollars and I gave you the facts. Every one of those was a fact. There wasn't a single hyperbole in there. Number one killer of children in the United States is drowning. That's a fact. Je Jeff, please don't losing it. The county is a fact. Jeff, don't tell me what I can or cannot say, Jason. So if you're going to make a speech about that, the answer is no. So it's I no hyperbole in there. Okay, that's not hyperbole. Answer. Those are all Je facts. Jeff, Jeff can I? Excuse Jeff, me, please? Susan. Um, sorry, I was in the middle of saying something. Um, the hyperbole isn't helping things. Tell me where Jeff, the hyperbole is. Tell me when it's not a fact. Don't, if you want to hear that for real, just let me finish the sentence, Jeff. I'll, I'll get there. Facts. I promise. Framing the conversation as this is um, this is the the that if that lack of support for your particular idea of what to do next with the Moilo pool is somehow tantamount to implicitly risking children's lives is is somehow driving the poor into a poorer state of life, life in our community. It's just even for the cases where that's true, it's not going to help us move forward because there's nobody around this table. 
at least on this side of the table, who is saying, we have objections yeah. to your idea because we hate children and families. It's not about that. Everyone here wants the, it's, the pool's a good thing. There's some arguments that why would, would we have one, but that's not where we're at right now. The conversation we're having is how can we make this pool function best for the community? Now, your idea, the town board's idea, seems to be that we can just split this 50-50. There's some obvious benefits. On its face, clearly something worth talking about. But when, when at least from my point, when I feel where there's some serious objections to that, and I had mine, Sally brought up the one I hadn't even thought about, the, whatever the number of the 27%. 20%. These are not, when we say these things, we are not coming back to you saying, screw you, I don't want a pool. We're coming back to you with an alternate idea or a, or a flaw that was found in yours that maybe if we explore that, we could come to a better one together. So moving from, from the particulars of how we can make this pool good to kind of making it into a political, not a political campaign, but like about telling the story, who can tell a better storyline, we're just gonna go in circles, especially because we've got, uh, it's 717, we've got 13 minutes to finish uh, this and the rescue squad and then a half hour for consolidation. So, I, and the last thing I wanted to say was this, is that um, I guess I wanted to, because obviously you all have spoken a lot about this, I wanted to just simply hear from the trustees if, if there's anybody who feels that there's enough information uh, that we have in hand to make an informed decision tonight, or is this going to be a longer conversation? Because I think it's going to be a longer one. And maybe there's a good point to pause it if we can find a good resolution for us to what we need to move forward, if that makes sense. So other than that, that's all I got to say. For I would like to see a proposal in writing before the next joint village board meeting of what you're proposing. And I asked a question, and I would appreciate the answer. The, the deficit that you're talking about that you are asking us to help you with is for the current 2012 year, 13. or is this your projected, projected. deficit for 2013? We can answer question, Sally. It's 2013, and just to add another point, you are a family of four, and you live in an apartment complex in the village, okay? Using your 27% number. Let's say that out of 100, the cost, all right? So you live in the village apartment complex, you pay $27. You are unfortunate enough to live in the town apartment complex a hundred yards away, and you're paying seventy-three dollars. Does that make sense? You need there if you're renting, your landlord is paying the property tax. But does that make sense? What doesn't make sense, Kevin, is for the town board, which for whatever historical reasons, none of us were involved. I don't think in this on either side of the table is that the town said they would take it over either because the village didn't want to do it or because for whatever reason we are in a situation where the town runs the Moriella pool by contract we are supposed to go halfsies on capital expenditures for the pool but we have no say in the operational expenditures of Moriella Pool. That is solely within the town board's purview. And all I'm saying is the village taxpayers pay their portion. 27%. 20%. It's, the, the, it's actually down to 20%, it's, but that's besides it the point. It's approximately. It's down to 20%. And then the, um, the town outside the village pays 80%. Right, and you all are supposed to run that on an income that you receive. Okay? So to say to that because villagers living in the village pay less. So is should absurd. landlords then pass on okay. that additional expense Kevin? to their tenants? No, the taxpayers pay even. Sally and Kevin, even. I guess, they don't pay even. Excuse me, they do pay even. Susan and Kitty are, are, are waiting in the wings, and we do have, we're running short of time, so I just. I'd like, like to have, have a Kitty more often. So, Kitty's been waiting to speak, so Kitty, I'm sorry. Okay, so we have, um, you know, had a traditional. Um, paradox of the fact that yes the village tax base is either 20 percent 25 27 percent but the population is 50 percent our populations are pretty even so if we were to try to make this proportional in terms of population I think that the 50 percent 50 50 might make more sense for people and I think what we're really coming down to is a kind of philosophical uh, ethic here, and which I think everybody basically does agree with. Um, recreation is one of the few public services 
that we provide that um, we all subsidize in some way through our taxes. And it provides an enormous public benefit. And public benefit really is one of the main things we're here for. So I think that um, we will never operate recreation at a profit or even come close to breaking even on it. It is something like public education, like a library, that some people will never use, but everybody will contribute to. And that's one of the roles that government plays. Uh, I so don't I disagree would, with that. Katie. Okay, so if, if, we, if we look at the, the fact that our populations are roughly equal, what we're asking is, let's make this bill a shared bill. And <laughs> I, I, I personally think the idea of having the committee make recommendations and then have to go to one board meeting and then have to go to another board meeting to get approval if a handrail is missing again is cumbersome. But if, that, if that's the solution, if that would make the village feel that you are being represented in the operations of the village, I would be willing to consider that for one year and see how it works. But I just want to correct some things. It is, you may be a 50-50 population, but your own statistics show consistently that the village is one-third of the membership attending Moriella Pool. That's membership now, only. Excuse me. The whole point of taxation is to distribute evenly across the entire mm -hmm. tax base the cost of doing something. So snow removal, you know, is apportioned, okay? Things are apportioned evenly, proportioned by your assessment and your taxes. That is true of the library, 414. Nobody's paying more than anybody else. They're paying their fair share. I'm saying that the village is happy to contemplate the idea of paying our fair share, but it's not called 50-50. It's called proportional to the tax or base it, that we all pay on. Or if it is, and we haven't gotten it, but Susan has been waiting patiently, then Ken, uh, um, so, and then Jeff and Kevin, I think. Well, I mean, I just very quickly, and Sally, maybe we can come up with a solution. I mean, there's also a lot of people in the town inside the village who feel pretty strongly about closing Memorial Pool and say we have the county pool, so why are we even having a you know a, a you know a village pool? I don't think anybody's prepared to make that decision just yet, and I don't want to bring it up, but I just know that is a lot of conversation of at least people outside of the village feel, you know, we can just go to the county pool and, you know, we have our own pools, and so, you know, there's a lot of people in the town inside the village who don't necessarily, you know, the membership might be different, but I think the daily rate probably shows it's mostly village people, but regardless, I mean, if you want to do it from a perspective of because, you know, of you paying a fund taxes and the cost of the pool is in the A fund and it's the loss, you know, if you want to, similar to what we'll probably do with the rescue squad, is take, you know, the 60% loss, take 20% off, which is your percentage you pay in A fund taxes, then that I think brings it down to probably 40,000 and split the loss 2020. That is a consideration we could put on the table. It's just, you know, we really, because we have to adapt our budget. Right now my budget is predicated on, you know, us absorbing half the loss and you guys taking the other half of the loss. Again, in my conversations with individual board members, people all seem to somewhat support this concept and didn't think as long as we did the two committee, you know, the you know the town, the village and the town subcommittees working together in operation. So I'd like to offer that as a possible solution that we take the sixty the sixty thousand, reduce it to twenty percent, you know, of your A fund, you know, taxable thing and split the difference so we can move forward with the town budget. I don't want to be adversarial, so please don't take this in an adversarial way. But it seems to me that this proposal should have come in writing in order for us to contemplate what it is that you were asking us to do, for Kitty to kindly provide and, you know, documentation, is, and I thank you for that. Um, but I find it very strange that we're at the very end of your budget processing and we're hearing about the proposal right now, and nothing is in writing. And I just find that very, very difficult, not only in, from the standpoint of our own budget cycle, but I think that it really does deserve 
some some consideration and I I really think that we should have had something in writing and to ask us or basically to sort of suggest that we don't as Jason said earlier the hyperbole I find not helpful and I also find it not helpful to ask the village of Newport's taxpayers who've already paid their share and contributed to the loss to be asked to pay 50% of the town function loss when we aren't 50% of your tax base. Because Susan, you, had, uh, you, you had a, 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 I apologize, I got a text, yeah. text that Channel 23 had gone down, so I was uh -huh. trying to get word that. Yeah, no, I, 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 so there's, there's nothing I can do. I spoke to my boss, he said, it's just, just keep right, going. We'll, 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 just, we can, uh, we'll just rebroadcast it, that's all. Yeah, I was yeah, about to yeah. say, it's taping though, yeah, so... Yeah, it's, just, it's, it's recording. Yeah. Okay. okay. No, uh, but you said you had a solution, a way to... to, to yeah. What what, yeah, what, okay. do we, what do we do next? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it... I'll and say it, it just came back anyway, so... Okay, oh, good, thank you. I'll say it again, but I just wanted just to respond to Sally. In fairness, Sally, um, the meeting that got cancelled, it was, you know, when we were supposed to have a town village meeting a while ago, this was one of the issues that was, you know, was more help who would have been on it if we had met. And secondly, just, you know, again, just in fairness to whatever, the second I brought this back to the board, because remember the board directed me to do something very different, which was to, the board directed me to put a budget together that put in half of the cost of Morella Pool and half of the expense, you know, the loss, and basically present a budget to the community that way, that basically put it on your shoulders to say, do you want to, you know, yes, no, and if you said no, we need to open the pool for half the year and then close it, or we would just not open it. I chose not to go down that route and try to come up with something that, and Gene and I felt the fairest way to go is to take all the expense, ask the village to just split the loss with us, okay, and you know, as a way to try to work together kind of thing. And right after I presented the budget, the next thing I did was call Jason to get over here to see Jason. I ended up, you know, seeing Jason, but he walked out. But I talked to Jason later. Not on purpose. Not on purpose. He had to go somewhere. I spoke to Stu and I spoke to Ariana. I spoke to Brian. I ultimately spoke to, you know, to Jason. I know. I tried to reach you. I sent you an email. And that's when I sent you two, three emails, mm -hmm. called you, and then I never heard back from you. Now, whether you went away or something, and then me and you got busy that's with other true. things. All right. Let's not go back and forth about that. Brian, Brian you haven't said anything. Okay, so anyway, uh, yeah, the, I'm sorry, the, right, suggestion, I'm the suggestion I had made, which I'll, I'll, re I'll state again, is taking the $60,000 loss, your taxable rate right now is about 20% of the value of the town, and I have the numbers because I had to look at it for the ambulance, okay? So taking the 60% loss, reduce it by 20, you know, the 20% taxable value that you pay in the A fund, which would bring the loss down to, I think, about 40000 if I'm doing the math right, and then splitting that between the two, you know the um, between the two boards. That's my suggestion as a as a compromise. I, I understand the compromise, but I think the point Sally's making is this: they're already paying the twenty seven percent in the loss, mm -hmm. so she's saying that I'm, they don't want to contribute an additional twenty some percent to the loss. So, if in fact they kicked in another fifteen, comes out it comes. If they kicked in another 15, mm -hmm. then their share would be almost 30,000. Well, not if we moved it to the B side of the No, budget. we moved it to the B. That's We're correct. I'm sorry. We can't, we can't, we can't, move, the the we can't, we can't move the cost. Kevin and Susan, I'm going to have to stop you there yeah. because I know you weren't quite finished it. Susan, Brian's waiting. Kevin had more. I just wanted to point out that it is now mm -hmm. 730, and we have the option to choose either the Rescue Squad or Consolidation because we don't have time to discuss both before 8 o'clock. Well, um, so with that, just keep that in mind, or we can discuss both for 15 minutes, I guess. Uh, right, Brian, please. Awesome. Great. Um, with all due respect to everyone involved, uh, we all agreed on a specific set of parameters involving getting things in to our respective clerks before the meetings. Whether storm or not, uh, Thursday, I think, would be the deadline, or even Friday afternoon. So Trustee Rhodes is right. We should have all had this information in our packets. And if not, it could have went to the next meeting. I'm not trying to jump on. I think the idea that Kitty brought up of having a committee, it may be a little cumbersome, but I think it's a great idea. I think it, um, we've seen some good work done between those two and uh, Trustee Glenn and Bosco. And I think that if there's, in my opinion, and I can't speak with the rest of the board, but if there's a, a shared management responsibility, then I think there would also be more likely to be a, a shared fiduciary responsibility. So that's, that's my point. Susan, were you, I'm sorry, I think you kept getting cut off. Were you finished? 
Is what you're saying? Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm done. Okay. And uh, Kevin, were you done? I'm, so, I just, I just, I just, just, I'm absolutely done. Jason, right. I just want to say one thing. And Brian, I understand that there was a deadline and stuff. Jason and I actually met on Friday, and, and we were going to put the agenda together, but then Friday we were, up, we were in rescue squad mode and emergency mm -hmm. mode, and it wasn't even until Monday we even had a chance to discuss the town, the town village meeting, and we agreed we had to cancel it. And then we were going to move it till next week, but because of our budget, I said to Jason, I really need to meet with you guys ahead of time. So we made this special meeting, you know, right. because of the time constraints and the concerns. So this one particular time, I'm sorry you didn't get the things no, in time. Well, but number one, it wasn't one particular time. And the last time we mm -hmm. blamed your clerk for mm -hmm. not having mm -hmm. materials and everyone was mm -hmm. in an uproar. Secondly, if the meeting was on Monday, then the agenda should have been prepared long before No, no, that. it was supposed to be done on Friday. Jason, it's always agreed that by Friday, Jason and I could love last minute things. Right. If well, that, that usually means we meet on a Wednesday, too. So you want to give well, no, everyone an opportune time right. to read all the details. I'm going to move. Wait, can I just make one other suggestion? There might be a simple way. Um, because I, I like Sally's idea that we need something in writing. It's just much easier to think about these things. Would it be too much to ask to just have um, a, a, the, whoever's on the town board, the, whoever's brain tells us this, just write us a revised memorial pool contract? With all the, everything you want to change about the relationship between the two, send it over to us so we have everything in one place. Your, every thought you have so we can then discuss it and go line by line. Rather than yeah. kind of toss around the philosophy and, because I, when people decide numbers, I have no way to know. I don't know how to think. And Stu, not to speak for Ariana, would you, could we, uh, Kevin and I schedule time with you and Ariana and the four of us could sit down and... Ariana's out of the country. Well, she'll, 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 she'll be back. back. She'll be back very I'm, shortly. I'm going to ask that there be a financial representative from the town and our treasurer in on this meeting. Well, we're just going to hash out some ideas and big. We're contract. looking at twenty thousand foot here, so not at not so at six centimeters. So I mean, we will. Kevin and I will meet with the, you three, maybe Ariana, some yeah. combination, and of we'll those find three combinations with, with and all get together. Consultation and, from this, we'll get a, a draft of something, and then we'll get a draft of something. That would be easier That'll to follow your thinking, honestly, than, than the than the. Fine with that. Uh, when is that? We can do that. The second Wednesday in November. The eleventh, November eleventh, something like that. We got the just by the twentieth. Fourteenth. Thank you. Can we beat that to death? Is that? No, is, is there anything else? Or can we leave it's this in their hands yes. for now? Well, yes. there, there, there's I mean, another question that I'm going to throw out on this, and then we're done with it. You always have a projected fund balance. I don't know what your projected fund balance is going to be for 2013, but perhaps you might want to consider earmarking some of it for this exact cost until this committee and we can all discuss this. We'll make a decision after our meeting. We have a budget meeting after this. How the board chooses to move forward on this will be decided by the board. Yeah, great. Yeah, but what I'm saying is I know, that I know you have come to a joint meeting, excuse me, you've come to a joint meeting and you have made certain demands, not requests, but demands of the village board that we pay a 50% loss. I am just suggesting that one of the ways to solve a budgetary problem in an interim position until such time as we can all work collegially together and come up with a proposal is to designate a certain amount of your fund balance to offset the, the loss if, there, if you think there's going to be one. And that can always be remedied with another solution <coughs> should we find it. We can wrap it up, Italian. I just want to say there was not a demand. It was put into the budget with the intent to come to the village to discuss what we had in the budget. And the reason I said to Jason that we had to schedule the meeting tonight and not wait was so we could have a conversation with you so the board could make a decision of what we're doing with our budget. So we're not making any demands. We're trying to talk with you, and that's why we're here tonight. I think putting I just had two things that come to mind. One is that what just happened in the, the the last hour or more is just, in my mind, Thank just you. the perfect example of why we should have co-terminous government and using all of this brain power to, to do one item. We have probably five or six intermunicipal contracts that are in the same state. Uh, number two, I, um, I'm fine with meeting with the subcommittee, and I'm sure Ariana is too, but could we have uh, points, something, from your point of view, what it is you're considering so that we're not starting Absolutely. from ground zero so that we can start from there and then... We'll do exactly what we did last time. Yeah. Do. I'll send you something. Okay. We'll get together, review it, we'll revise it, we'll talk about it again. We'll see what we come up with. Great. All right. That sounds perfect. Thank you all.
Um, now, is the Rescue Squad basically the same conversation, just it's change on the details? A, it's pretty much the same conversation, so if anyone... <laughs> can we skip the, skip the, the bulk of it and give you like the three sentence, here's the number, here's this, we argue for a minute, and then we, we do something else productive? Yeah, well, works? if you can give me 30 seconds. Okay, what I'd like to do is... Well, actually, I'm sorry, let me back up, because you know this better than that. We, got, we, have half, we have half an hour, I'm sorry, 23 minutes. Your meeting starts in 23 minutes. What can we get done? Do, are we tabling consolidation? Is that viable? We, Susan. Discuss that this evening. Yeah. Susan, we may have. Which is more vital? Uh, we, we can start our meeting later. later. We can start our meeting at eight thirty. Well, I mean, people, the chief is coming and the CWASP is coming, but we can. So anyway, I think I can do the ambulance really quickly. All right, if fast as we can. Let's take five think, minutes. Because I think I calculated uh, the numbers at least as a starting point, but I have to find them in the box. So let me at least start by. This is um, the copy of the opinion about the ability to do this, um, um, and attached is contracts, a past contract. So if you could just pass this around. This is Joe Moriello's letter to me, and it shows the calculations and stuff. If you can pass this around, I'll give you the numbers and I'll give you the calculations, and we can start off at that point with a well, sheet that I've already well, worked on. Well, let me stop there because number. I'll tell you right now that, I mean, I know for myself. <laughs> I gave that to you. I know, yes. what's that? I know, no, well, you gave, you gave me part of this, but the, um, like Brian said, um, That's okay. I'm for whatever, just giving you that for whatever reason, uh, but a list of numbers may not be helpful if we don't have time to digest them, and, and frankly, It'd be irresponsible to take it on the words. Yeah, I haven't seen these either. So I'm well, no, that's, that's stuff that we've all okay, so had. This, this is background. We don't this need to write this up. This, 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 this is copies. Yeah, yeah, this is copies you've all had that I've sent okay, you a while ago. It's copies you've all seen. Well, I've sent these copies to everybody except for the cover. Well, no, we all have it now. Let's move on. So, But I made copies to bring. So basically, just in a real quick nutshell, we'll have to make a decision here. I think that's what the numbers would be um, based on the polls that we got. Which is not what I have in the budget. It actually, the town would have to come up with another twelve thousand dollars. But um, if you want to just send these around, we don't have to make a decision tonight. Let me just give it to you. Um, okay, let me just keep running. Um, I can't find. I don't know. Gene should have that's um, what this is. What I'm giving you is that. That's selling. just one to pass around. Yeah. Unfortunately, I thought we we do have copies for everybody, but I have to find it in the box. And right now, I'm not going to waste my time. So, just basically, in a quick nutshell, I'm going to make a decision. In a quick nutshell, Carol finally got today from the rescue squad um, what the calls were for last year, what the calls are as of today for this year. Um, I tried to use did the same calculation that has been based in the past. The town calls the village calls the percentage, the taxable value of the town of the village, subtracting it out, and then the reduction and whatever. So right now, based on everything, <coughs> it shows. Um, <coughs> is it not giving you the right number? The town has put 736 calls and the village 450. You know what? This doesn't have your the dollar amount. Well, but we don't. Uh, again, it's okay. We're not going to understand the tables understand. and numbers. You know what, the, Give us the story. What's the What's the gist? The story is, I think the rescue. I think the village would come up with about twelve thousand dollars to pay um, for their portion of the rescue squad, based on doing the taxable value and the number of calls for the moment. Okay. The town would have to come up with another twelve thousand. I originally did a twenty-five percent to be paid for the village, seventy-five percent for the town. But when I got all the numbers and did the taxable value and did everything. It came out to the town having to come up with about another twenty-four thousand, and this village coming up with twelve thousand, and so the town would be paying one hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars of the contract, and the village would be paying about fifteen grand. Well, since we don't need to make a decision tonight, we can put this off to our next village board meeting. And I can try to, and I can try to spell it out for you a little bit. Better. Well, that's, I can have Nancy look at it, and, yeah. and, and I can meet with Nancy. Go. Over it. Obviously, we're gonna have the village. Uh, these kind of things we need to build. Turn yeah. to look at. It. We need yeah. time. That's fine. That's if, not. If we look at yeah. these, do we know what your specific proposal is, or this is just background? It's, it's, it's basically what that is. It's going back to the, a contract that was negotiated with myself and Tom Nyquist way back when, which came up with the original formula, and which is you know taking the taxable value and then you guys paying for the difference in the calls that you get over and above, or whatever. So this is background information from the past. I think what happened, just really quickly, where I think things went wrong, was um, Mayor, uh, Mayor Duncan saw the rescue squad in the A fund, and because you guys were giving part of the money to it, he thought it should all be in the B fund, so he stopped paying. The truth of the matter is it has to be in the A fund by law. It's just that you pay a small percentage that offsets the cost to the village. And so the town pays about three quarters of it in the A fund. You pay a small percentage for the calls over and above that you're not paying through your taxable rate. 
So all the background information is a past plan that was put in place that we've lived with for a long time until Mayor Duncan moved, uh, cut it, cut it, okay. we're just trying to put it back. Okay, That's I guess what, what I'm getting at is will we have a significant amount of time before our meeting on the 14th of November to have your specific proposal, so it won't yeah. be philosophical, but it'll be, yeah. this is what we're Actually, talking what about. Actually, what I did do is I took every, I got you all the background information just so everybody could be on the same page. <coughs> then today when Carol finally got the call split up, Carol and I, well, 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 you guys were waiting here, we're trying to calculate based on the formula to come back to say what we thought the, the cost to you would be. But I'll go back and put it together in a formal letter to explain it all, but you really pretty much have everything. I'll give you the calls and all that kind of stuff, and I'll spell it out. Just pretty, what, is, what it is you're requesting so that we know specifically what we're going to do. No, 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 I don't mean now, but before our meeting, okay, we'll sure. have the we specifics. Need we need a draft sure. contract. Sure. Sure. And that's an actual, that you have all, you, you have contract. Contract. If that's what it is. She's yeah. all right. You pretty much have the past right. ones as yeah, background. Yeah. So, all right, um, let's, uh, let's okay. close that off. Um, is the, I apologize for no again, but um, let me, let's do this quickly. Uh, we have finished from May 16th and June 26th. I'll move to sure. adopt both sets. Second. Uh, any discussion or amendments? All in I favor? just got them on the vote now. Yeah. Well, all right, well, that's do all I have do we, what? Do you want, or should we not vote on the minutes? Is that? Well, I what's our table? Did I actually have these? Oh, yeah. Let's go. Table of minutes. Okay. Right, that's the third time in a row. Can we can we plan for our next meeting that everyone will have read them and we'll have the meeting minutes from this meeting in sufficient time so that we can actually approve them, which yes, is what, should. what we should do? Yes. I think that would be I a great realize. idea. I feel bad. All right. Um, well, consolidation. I <laughs> uh, assume we all got the memo from Ken Bond with the timeline proposal? No? no I, don't what? I got a copy of it recently. Um, I don't think that's idea. Yeah. Well, then, uh, Susan, was it you, Sally? Who, was, who wanted to put the consolidation timeline and study on here, then? I wanted to put the consolidation on, but not Ken Bond. Oh, okay. I must be in a different facet. So um, please, Sally, what is it? that's just totally a different topic. Okay. I think that what we are coming to, I think, is basically with consolidation, the study committees, for the most part, have done their work. The Finance Committee took on the Facilities Study Committee because the Facilities Study Committee never met. And so we are working on that. And I think it is time now. Um, the Finance Committee is doing very, very well with, so far with the data that we have and have been able to work out the budget. Ross and I and the committee have come up with right now a $1.4 million savings should the village and town merge in 2011. We did not use budgets, we used actual figures and merge. And we haven't finished everything because we don't have human resources yet. We filed well, it today, today, right? Yeah. Hmm? Are we got four today. We got a copy. Are we in emails? Was filed today have with both clubs. Can you have a copy with them? I, I, I have want. a copy for everyone. I would like a copy. Yes. And, and I'd, so like to, that I'd like to know we were the first subcommittee to file. And so they were the first subcommittee to be it's finished. True. We haven't sent in a report yet. We haven't sent in a report. But anyway. Why did I roll that? Okay. At random. All right. Random. Kevin, Brian, very good job. But no. The committees are, and I know that the infrastructure committee report is coming out this week. Mm -hmm. So we have those committee reports. Finance is doing very, very well. We're going to take all the input that, that you did, but what I was going to say is we are 1.4 million and not finished yet, and that is without the million dollar grant because our goal was when we started. We didn't know for sure whether we were going to get that million dollar grant in the whole thinking process. And it seems to me far more important to show our two communities what could have been done anyway. <coughs> and so the, I like to think of the, the million dollars from the state as icing on the cake, which is nice icing. But we have met the goal of the Efficiency Committee, whose recommendation was that should we, before we presented the referendum to the community, 
that it had to be a zero tax impact. It could be less, you could do better, but no tax increase for either town or village. And we've more than achieved that. At a break-even status, I believe the projection was we had to get $500,000 out between the two. Oh, I remember. <laughs> Money, I remember. Uh, <laughs> and we're now well over 1.4 with the finance committee work that is being done. So I think we can honestly say to this community, and we have not been conservative, have we? We've been trying to be fair and to put in we a have balanced... Been conservative. You have been conservative. <laughs> huh? We have been conservative. We would hope that you have, we have been, been conservative. conservative. Yes, right. we've you, been you, conservative. You just in the sense that, yeah. okay. that we are not trying to nickel and dime. We're trying to look at this, especially, and I, I want, since he's here, I want to publicly thank Chris Marks and Blue uh, for working with Susan and myself on the DPW part. And you did a great job, and thank you. Um, so we've, we've done really well, and, and Chris and Susan really have done yeoman service in the DPW part of the budget, which I can tell you was all over the place. And Susan didn't know it, but she was in charge of spring cleanup, because the spring cleanup was in the supervisor's line. So it, it you know, really very, very complicated and very difficult to do. But what I want us to do tonight is set a date for our target. And I know you d we didn't want to do this in the very beginning, but I think it's really now critical that we set a date that we will commit to holding the referendum. And if we want to enjoy a million dollar grant from the state, our referendum has to be before April 1st. Okay. I just want you, as we discuss this, because if you say, okay, we really don't feel comfortable doing it that way, mm -hmm. in other words, having a goal and getting the paper in on time as the faculty member requires, that's fine. But just realize that the deadline, if we want to achieve that extra million dollars to offset tax, okay, and 30% in transactional costs, um, we need to have the referendum by, and I don't know how many days do we need to file something with the yeah, state. A, yeah, there's a, that's why we have a. There's a time on every time. Okay. So, well, hold, before we get into this, it is 7:49. We have 11 minutes. No, no, and, eight, and, eight, 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 eight. Oh, well, we can, well, no. Actually, what Kitty said, and Susan objected, and it didn't go any further than that. Well, no, so. no, no. I said. We can continue the conversation for a little let's, bit and then let let's me, go. Let me finish getting the meeting on track. Um, the Because um, this might be a long conversation, is what I'm saying. And because uh, I'm actually going to be opposed to this tooth and nail. This one? So, what um, else is new? It, well, you keep, you keep <laughs> rushing things and shoving things down the no. people's throat. And Everybody keep has known this for a year, Jason. The only well, person, come January, we will have been doing this it doesn't in been doing slow it motion. In part to help you hopefully get in on this. No, 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 no. Don't, don't toss that. Uh, that I'm not stupid. Excuse me. That. Mm, you're right. Okay. Please. And what I'm saying to this group is if we, as two boards who want to bring our community together as one community, wish to have the advantage of the million dollars, then we need to have that referendum before April 1st. For this year, if, right? Right. Because it is an annual thing, it's not a... Well, it, the, if the legislature changes, it might, right. you know, it's all, you know, it's it's a million. We will enjoy the million dollars for as long as the state funds it, okay? And right now, they fund it, so we know it's there. So the question is, how many days before April 1st do we need in order to file and do our timely stuff with the state of New York so that we are in frame April 1st? Do you have... Um, I'm just going to um, jump in for a second from the perspective of, um, Jason, it's just that if we want to realize the money in 2014, 
we have to do the. I, look, I, 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 I'm just, I'm just. That's all. But anyway, can, so, I so, so, I'm not. The you know that. You know the dates. Are. You know, do you know what the dates are? I am. I'm going to give. I'm going to do the yeah, dates. Let's do the dates, please. But uh, no, I'm going to say this. Susan, sure, okay. you, know, you don't know what I'm going to say, and no one does. The four people just cut me off. Um, it is not everything you and Sally say is going to be completely logical and make sense, but skips about six different steps before you get there. We have not even, I have not read the Human Resources Committee. Um, I don't know how legitimate these reports are. I don't know how thorough, I don't know how accurate they are. I don't know what the sum total of these reports mean for our community. I don't know what the, what the total fall apart figure is, and nobody around this table knows these things either. Nobody. Um, the most you and Sue Sally know the most because you've been on this most central committee, but you don't know how HR is going to impact those numbers yet because you haven't seen the report. Now, if we're going to say to the community that we are blindly going to set a, a, a date for a referendum for something we don't know if anyone wants yet, except for those who are working on it, I think that's a big mistake. I think that at least once in this process, in this, and I've been saying this from the day I got elected and been ignored the day I got elected, it is critical, in my opinion, that we get some kind of public buy-in. Not asking people to bust their ass in a committee. I mean, the standard, basic, everyday public participation we demand for every planning process this community goes through. If we can even hold ourselves to the same standard of public involvement that an applicant before a planning board to have, are held to, then we don't deserve to be sitting around this table. And we certainly don't deserve to be kept telling people that we're going to uh, make their lives better um, if you just vote yes on a referendum for consolidation because it's a nice idea to have one government. Because that's the only argument any of us have until we have the data. The data that Fairweather was supposed to be provide, provide us and failed to, and the data these committees were established to, to, to pull together and are still in the process of doing. So in my mind, there's a gap in the middle where we have to have the data collected, the numbers we, were, we, were, we deserved to have two years ago given to us, and then there's an article in the paper, there's a thing on whatever, there's a public forum, questions and answers. Is this good or not? What does this mean for my life? And after that, after it's percolated and the actual final data is, is kind of descending and people actually can cast an informed vote, you know, then we set the referendum and then there's the political campaign of the, of the lead up and hopefully it's not like the middle school and it's more like the constitutional convention. But we're not, I think we're not doing our job yeah. if we get the, num the, the papers together and just run to the next step. May, I, and that's all. may I have that's all. the podium? Then I, please, because then everything you guys are saying is exactly perfect. This, we're just missing one piece. No, we're outside. missing a big piece. Years later, though. Excuse me. We're missing a big piece. You and I both know when the budget is due for the village and mm -hmm. how many days we must have it done. The town knows when their budget is due, and that's what you do. You work backwards. And Jason, we have tried, and I have tried very hard to hear what you're saying. The study committees have met. They're done. You're done. I don't have your report. So, and all of this has been televised for people to follow, to watch, to ask questions, to come to meetings, to do. Okay? Everything has a step by step process. Now, what I'm saying is, you and I know when the budget is due for the village. We know we have to work backwards and start it. Sure. And all I'm saying is, let's do it the right way this time set the date, and make sure the goals are met. So November 2014, that's not done. That's not, that's only your opinion. And yeah. I don't even think you'd agree to that, you'd find another way. Can I just make a comment too though, and, and just to kind of echo some of Jason's, because I just think somehow something's been lost in translation here. The grant that we applied for and then was fulfilled, and then the purpose of the subcommittees is not for consolidation, it's called government efficiency. You found $1.5 million. Tell you what, without consolidating, give us half of that. Because you should have been able to find all that one point five. It's all your ta town side, that's why I object to the I, I'm not, I was speaking still, Sally. So what I'm saying is the study is not about consolidation. The study is supposed to be about government efficiency. If it's government efficiency and it's in the town, then we have a lot of work to do in the town. And I would like to find... So Susan, I don't need you nodding your head. Sorry, this is me sorry. speaking, okay? This is this is what this is what I it's about. Okay? Town, that's so I mean. you don't need to do it. If it's in the town, and I didn't say it was it, if it's in the town, okay, you say most of it's in the town, a million of it's in the town. Give me half of it. Show me where I can get a half million dollars of savings, and not now, but show me tomorrow where I can get a half million dollars in savings. Mm -hmm. Because that would be real. I'm not saying your numbers aren't real. I'm not saying any of the numbers are real, but it seems to be people have gone into, and I've watched a lot of them on TV, 
it seems to be everyone's end game here, and Jason can agree or disagree, is consolidation is the only way to do it. Well, no, the grant that we asked for and the studies we asked for are efficiency. And efficiency doesn't always mean consolidation. It very well may mean consolidation. I, have not, I just received the report today from the personnel committee. I watched a lot of it. A lot of it to me speaks to that we're going to have some very hard work to do with rooms full of attorneys and unions. If part of your savings is based on that, then you yeah. can read them. I, I just, I'm just saying it is. So if Susan has information, maybe she'll provide it to us tonight. Maybe we can take a half million dollars off our town budget because I'm just asking for half of it, Susan. And if we can't, then I guess I'm very confused by the whole process. And anyone that's worked with me on the board or seen me on this board, I need the numbers way ahead of time, too. So for us to make a schedule and put something up for a vote, I don't know what I'm voting on. Jeff, I, I have another question. Brian. Uh, I was going to say that um, to drag your feet and not hold your committee and then say those kind of things. Oh, I, I mean, didn't whether, drag my feet. I didn't hold my committee. You're right. Absolutely right. Well, I mean, it wasn't whether, dragging my okay, feet. Okay, well, don't drag me. I'm sorry, I don't even want to say that because I hate the way this is going right now. But I really think that even if the consolidation doesn't go through, which it may or may not, um, we still have done the research and we'll still have the answers. And then if it doesn't go through, we can still find these things. But I think if we don't look at it and don't move forward one way or the other, then we'll never get there. And and Jason, I mean, like you know, I'm I am concerned about um, moving forward too quickly a little bit. But I think Sally makes a good point about setting a deadline, and maybe we don't have to set the deadline to have the actual referendum. But we could set the deadline. We could find out when we need to have that vote by, <coughs> and then and then up until then cram and you know, to vote most of our attention or as much as humanly possible to getting there and then have that vote and then we can decide whether or not to go to the referendum. Um, I think um, and I think I that's I that. think I think that's fair and, and I think it's just it's a little strange when you know because you say those things and you have point done Jeff, work. and I, I don't mean to be critical but but I think all of us remember college days and you know the professor has said the paper is due as such, you know, here's the syllabus, here's when the exam is, here's when the midterm is, here's when the paper is due. You know, then you have to set your, what, whatever way you want to do it, you know the deadline. And that's all I'm asking us to do is set a syllabus, set a timeline. I like Brian's idea, we'll work as hard as we can to get there if we're not done. We won't kill each other over. I might kill some people, but we won't in general <laughs> kill each other. <laughs> and, you know, get the process done. Because I think, you know, and, and nobody's at fault, but I think just this evening, as hard as we've tried to work together, it, it clearly suggests that we spend an awful lot of time getting not much done, and one government might be a better way for this community to go. And so all I'm asking is that we commit on behalf of the committee, because I'm proud of what the committees have done. I really, you know, they've done, they've worked hard at the committees. And, you know, so I think we have made yeoman, I, I'm surprised. We did better than I thought we were going to do when we fought it out last year. And i just like us to give a tentative thought that we start thinking about the end in sight and working backwards. If, as, as Brian said, which I thank you for saying that. If we don't get there, we'll just all say we gave it our best try and we'll have to wait a year. But I would hate to see us, if we can possibly gain that million dollars, we wouldn't be having the Moriella discussion we had earlier. I mean, there, you know, this is, we, we're so working hard to show that we can work together. So I'm asking us, do you want to try for March 19th, which is a Tuesday, March 21st, which is a Thursday, you know, to set a date that we'll aim for together. And not discounting anything that Jason said, and by the time we get there, Jason, you will be so proud of us that you will son. buy in. It's not about and that. Not about <laughs> I have to cut you off because we're already right in the time for me. Please, I'm, oh. <laughs> I'm cutting her off to give it yeah. to you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, it sort of backs up what Brian and Sally are saying, but let me just try to put it in a little different perspective. I do think the million dollars has made a difference, and I think the fact of the April 1st deadline so we could give the community the opportunity in 
um, um, 2014 to get the million dollars, I think is an obligation on our part to try our hardest to do. By setting the date now, it, we don't have to live by it. It's just, I mean, we're basically setting it now. Then we work backwards with a timeline that basically says, what is all the work that needs to be done? In terms of, like Jason's right, we have to get the committee reports. Mm -hmm. We have to put together a, um, a, a recommendation of what this, this government's going to look like based on all of the reports. Come up with a model. Start to sell it to the community. Get the two boards to agree they like the model. Agree the fact that we're comfortable with the numbers we brought forward about the million for saving. Get the boards to agree, get the boards to agree they want to put it up, and then start to sell it to the community. We could at any given point decide not to end up I'm going sorry. forward on March 19th, but we're putting, we're doing it like Sally said, we're giving ourselves a deadline, we're working towards it, if we're not ready to take the test, we don't have to do it. But we have to, I, I mean, I'm when not willing to lose a million dollars. we're selling this to the community? Selling well, to, when did no, we no, decide we're selling this to the community? I'm not educating the community, words. educating the community through the community. It's, it's a precise choice of words. I'm sorry, exactly I'm sorry. Exactly. I meant that we have a, we have a committee um, on the um, community, community um, Community the relations, the outreach committee, for the outreach committee to take the work that we've done and bring it forward to get the community to see if they're interested in doing it. Okay, that would be very nice for a change, actually. So I agree, but yeah. I don't think the outreach committee has gotten the information yet to go forward and do what they need to do. I believe that since we've gotten all the reports, hopefully we'll have them by next week. The finance committee, which was the way it was set up to begin with, will take all that stuff, work on it, try to come back now with a you know bigger understanding of everything. Then it's for all our both boards to decide: do we like this? Do we agree? And and, and then you know how do we want to move forward? But just by setting a date right now that says we are going to try our hardest to put things together, educate the community, see if people think this is the right way to go, and then potentially put it up for a vote. We're just giving ourselves a timeline to try to get that million dollars for the community, and we could always pull the trigger and say we're not doing it, but I think it's our obligation to try to deliver it for the community. Mm -hmm. And we have to work backwards. Would it, uh, would it be possible to get like the, um, like our, the two types we've discussed tonight, like the rescue squad issue and the Memorial Pool issue, again, um, there's no proposal. So I, I, I mean, um, there's, under no circumstances will I vote for anything about any date because I want to actually see a timeline. Who's going to be doing the work? What work actually has to be done? What's a reasonable frame of time for them to do that? Rather than pick the date where we know we can try to maybe try to get uh, money and, and shoehorn in the rest of the process, it's backwards. We need to figure out, we don't even know what work needs to be done yet. Yeah, how, let alone how long it's going to take us to do it. Get, look at how long it's taken us to do the committees and we don't have all the work done. Jason, yeah. you have to set deadlines. Whenever you do anything, you have to set a deadline. But not before you know how long it's going to take you. Because if you don't set a deadline, nothing ever gets done. Okay. Out of respect for Jason, which I do well, respect him. Uh, look, Kitty, oh. she, Kitty was... Just, I, I did get um, to look at the Human Resources Report briefly today, and it seems to me, I'm not sure if I'm understanding this correctly, that this might be an opportunity for both of our municipalities to renegotiate our employee contracts and our union contracts which, as a new government, is an opportunity I don't think we will have the same advantage of if we stay the same. No, Am I wrong? No, it's, it's not like a clean slate. It's, they're just recommendations for future negotiations. But you are right, Kitty. It is an opportunity with a consolidated government to renegotiate all of your contracts. The ones that aren't finalized yet can still be negotiated. So you're right. It creates a new opportunity change the paradigm. It does. That, me, that it just seems to me is our greatest hope for, because in, on both sides of our um, municipalities, um, generally the way that we can make savings <coughs> in human resources is by losing people. Because it's very, it's difficult when you're working with a contract to say give back. Most of the time, that's something that uh, employees have a hard time being asked to do. But my understanding is that when we're merging employees, we may have an opportunity to start some of that from a different starting point. And I think that is honestly the, the biggest savings and efficiency that our merged governments could hope to see, because separately, we're locked in to pretty much what we've got right now. Well, we could have uh, hours of conversations. Well, but, but, but Jason, you was... said you'd like to have hours of conversation, but, but now... you never seem to have time to have 10 minutes. So but th this Excuse, is I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Well, Can let's we're, have 10 we're minutes We're five minutes late on a meeting. We've got people waiting for you. And this was, I mean, we're, we're trying to wrap this up and talk about next steps. We don't 
It's not appropriate conversation right now. Okay. I'm going to move that we set March 19th, which is a Tuesday, as the deadline optimistic goal that we will try and have all of our work done by both all the committees, the umbrella committee, which is all of us, the proper hearings and everything else, and work backwards from that. Is there a second for me? March 19th. I'll second for it. Discussion as long as uh, that's that's the vote for the referendum. That's what that you're saying. That is our the vote goal. To vote it's not whether we're going not to set mm -hmm. in stone. It is our goal okay. to be able I, to do that. Okay. I guess uh, so. so then you're second. Well, we actually yeah, do this separately. Yeah. Is this yeah. still second? Yeah. Um, right. Any discussion? A um, sure. couple things. Um, one, I'm I'm fairly disappointed that when we started this process, we were going to have these joint meetings every month and we're going to particularly stay on top of this topic which hasn't happened very well and I'm personally disappointed in that and if we're really going to move ahead we, sp we spent a lot of time on this not only this group but the steering committee members of the community the consultant all of that we owe it to the community to go full speed to get the work done and see if this is a good idea or not and we can't continue the way we've been doing so far and get anywhere because some of the committees didn't meet even though they were supposed to start in June. Um, this committee which is going to have hard job because you're going to have to come up with a proposal and if we had these minor things that are such a problem, wait till we get this proposal that we have to put together, it's going to be a lot of time. Now some of the things that Jason was mentioning that's the responsibility of the outreach committee. We've met several times. Uh, Trustee Vasco and I in that committee have met. We have plans for getting started. Now that we have our first report, we'll get started on disseminating that to the community and various methods. So hopefully everyone will have an opportunity to see this stuff. And if you have any other ideas about that, please tell us because you know we're not closed-minded about any of it. But I think no matter what, we think about it in particular and our own opinion we owe it to the people who elected us to spend the time and do this right and get the work done and so far I thought we've done in general not a great job on that. Some specific groups have but we we need to do better and that's expected of us and I and I hope we'll all resolve to do it and not if we're opposed to it will we'll just not do it or if we're really gung-ho try to cut corners none of that I mean we have to give quality work and I think we should get at it and uh, I guess that's what I have to say I, I would just like to reiterate the fact that our subcommittee spent a lot of time together <coughs> and we did crunch the numbers we read outside articles um, and, and there are great opportunities for savings. And so I'm happy to report once again that my subcommittee's work and Brian's subcommittee's work is done. Randall Leverett served on that committee, Don Kerr, Ross Pollock, and Amy Cohn. It's all done, it's submitted. I would suggest that you follow up with every other committee and see why they're not done, because they, they should be done except for yours because you start now. Right. And finance can't be done until you're all and done. Jason, just we're very a little well tiny into example, it. Just a little tiny example. Our committee has determined that this payment of lifetime health benefits for employees is something that we cannot sustain. We can't continue to pay that forever because it's paid out of current operating funds Neither the town or the village set aside set aside money for that going forward. And for the village, if you were employed, I think prior to 2007, and you work for five years only, you get lifetime health benefits. If you retire from the village. Yeah. If you're, yeah, if your last job is the five, five years. Anyway, um, for, for we I, I understand. That. So, so that's yeah, why I, I, wanna, I just want to know if you want us to move it for discussion yeah, purposes. Not, yeah, I mean, do you want to, you not, want to vote first? But we need to finish our, yeah. That's yeah. why, I, yeah, because Kevin started talking, we haven't even moved it for discussion right. purposes. So, so did you have anything else about this? All, right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'm opposed. Okay, so would somebody like to move it on behalf of the town? Same application same motion. Same with the Sally, uh, yes. on the Yes. Somebody like to second? 
Sure. Okay, now for just social purpose, I just want to make one just quick statement similar to what Kevin said really quickly. I think that um, most of the committees that, that um, convened worked incredibly hard. Mm -hmm. I think everybody was incredibly dedicated. Um, I know the finance committee was meeting once a month for a while, and about two months ago started meeting every single solitary week. So, you know, the commitment was there from every committee that convened and met, and so I think everybody should be applauded. I think the only committee that really fell down was the umbrella committee, which was the two boards, okay? And the, the two boards were the umbrella committee. We were supposed to meet every month, and you're absolutely right, Stuart. It was our responsibility to come and keep this conversation going, and if we had more town village meetings jointly, we would have been discussing this, you know, and giving updates and stuff. So anybody who fell apart, it was the two boards, not the committees, who have all worked incredibly diligently hard for the purposes of doing the work that they signed up for. And so in terms of moving things forward, you know, and I think we have been, you know, basically following the model that was set. And again, it was, I think, only us that fell down. But um, <coughs> with that said, that's my part of the discussion. If anybody wants to say anything, otherwise, I'll just call the vote. Ready to vote? I, okay. I need the... Um, I need the motion explained. Uh, the motion is wait. to set as a as a referendum date, March nineteenth. As a goal. As a goal for uh, all the work to get done. For too. all the work to be done, and have a referendum vote at that time. For the community to vote on. But it's not a firm. It's not setting the public hearing for March nineteenth. Well, we, we the vote for March nineteenth. It's setting the goal of March nineteenth as being the date we work towards, with us being able to at any point make any changes based on the work we do. But it's giving ourselves a goal, saying to the community by March 19th, we hope to be setting a vote for the for whatever, and it's up to us now to do all the work to be able to comply with that date. Okay, so you're not setting March 19th as the date for the referendum. You're setting March 19th as, as a goal, goal to try and right. to be right. 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 to be finished. Right. No, 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 no. To set the date for March 19th, with the intent of doing all the work to feel comfortable bringing it up for a vote on that date but we can change it at any given point. It's setting a deadline for ourselves and making everybody have to work to get to that Not goal. Firm. Okay, so the, the, goal is to have, yes. the goal is to have the vote on March uh, That is the goal. So that is, to pull it that that is the goal. Okay. Right. Wait, so the that's what I was... Or, or the board vote. Yes, no, no the, the public, public vote. Referendum. The public vote. Does so anyone know, but we need to pass, that's before right. you have a referendum, each board needs to pass. Yes, there's a lot of work that has to be done. That, but you know, then we March 19th is probably it's legally too soon to be honest. Our end goal it may not be legally possible. Yeah, I don't know. Does it anyone is, know? It is, it, it is legally possible because. Um, well, how many days before? Can, there is, um, without getting into depth, and. Um, and I might 45 even ask, or 90 days, sound right? To um, I think there's, six, there's a timeline. I'm going to, if I can pass this all off to you just for you to. It was sent via email, but again, I follow up with paper, even though we're zero Plus waste. But in here is a in here is a um, timeline that um, basically using October twenty fifth as the because yeah. that's when yeah. Ken Bond thought we were having our joint town village meeting. That was my fault. I thought it was that night. So he sort of put down all the dates of what we have to do to meet a March eighteenth deadline, and so we have a legal amount of time to do it. It's just we have to start following it, and I can you know give you all. Like we've agreed the committee reports, final end committee reports, December 30th, okay? You, you are way ahead I, of I thought it was November. Yeah. Yeah. Is that all you need to know? No, no, the finance committee must, you guys. Uh, folks, uh, the very last thing we need to do, can I have everyone's attention? Susan, yeah. Kelly, uh, Kelly, um, Kitty. Um, the very last thing this meeting has to do before you all can start and these folks can tell you what they have to say is for Jean to know what's going on so she can vote. So that's the only thing I'd like to see happening at the table right now is just fill her in please so we can move on. Is there any other questions, Jean? She just said she had more questions. Okay, okay, okay. So it said according to Ken, it says November 1st, adopt final committee reports. Right. So if they added a couple more days to that, we would be adopting the final committee reports, which Sally is now saying. December 30th. No, 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 no. Yeah. See, she's Sally's. Yeah, the committee being. reports. The committee reports are being. The committee reports are already being handed in. Kevin's handed it in. Don't, I, don't. That I was just see. something Ken put that put together okay. as a working model for us to work backwards. That has not been reviewed. That has not. There's some misunderstandings in here that he put in there. Which don't he misunderstood. So don't. I'm just saying legally we have the time. It's just that if we want to truly try to put it up for a vote by March 19th. For the potential to get the million, there's a lot of steps we have to take going backwards. And maybe we'll make them, maybe we won't, but unless we set it and start working, we won't know. So let's just vote on it, and then we'll see if we can do it or we can't, and we might know by next month we've blown it already, okay? 
So it's not worth talking about anymore because there's a lot of work we have to do to see if we can comply. Are you going to vote? I'm ready. Okay. okay. So the <laughs> motion is to aim for yes. a consolidation referendum to be voted upon on March 19th, but you want to basically reserve the right to be flexible. That if it doesn't yes. come around. That is not part of the motion, yeah, but, but that, that, yes. that it is yes. Okay. yes. Okay. Yes. That if things don't follow the erroneous mm -hmm. timeline, mm -hmm. that you are leaving yourself, it's okay that you change that March 19th deadline. Yeah. I don't think that's going to be a goal to change it. Well, the goal I'm is not saying that. to do it. I'm just either, Gene, Gene, either that, I okay. am voting Thank you for, adding the confusion for to Gene, was that, March was, 19th as the date for the referendum to be proposed for the public, or I am voting upon March 19th being the date that the referendum is being proposed to the public. But yes. that may not come to fruition, and the date may change, and therefore... I have flexibility. That's so what you're I have flexibility, and that means or I don't. And, and that's, that's my question. question. That's what you're voting on is number two. We're not setting the date. We're voting on number two. And the truth of the matter is, as much as we, some of us would truly we like to see that date upheld so we can potentially take part of that million dollars, if it's not feasible because there's too much work that has to be done, then we're going to blow it, That's and we'll see what happens. That's what's going to be the flexible. Okay. okay. And okay. I don't think, Gene, okay. the community would okay. be too excited right. if we anyway. screw up losing a million dollars. Anyway, so anyway. Well, how does the million play into it? Because yeah, if, we, we, if, we don't, if we don't approve the um, referendum by before April 1st, Okay. It's the it it's the following year. Okay, so right. it would have to be the following right. year. So that's a, that's the incentive to try to move this forward. If we can't be it, so be it. We tried, and if we say we're just not capable of doing it, we don't have enough information, and we don't feel comfortable, then we'll take the time and the work that we need to do to make us feel comfortable. And if it's another year for the million dollars, so be it. But there, but some of us believe it's worth the effort to try to see if we can get potentially a model that works, people to buy into it, and potentially get the million dollars. If it doesn't, so be it. But or we may never, never even go to a referendum. That's right. We might not. Okay, I'm on board. I got it now. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No, because I have no idea what we're doing. Okay, I, uh, <laughs> motion's so carried. It doesn't matter. I'll explain it to you. Excuse me. I move to adjourn. Excuse me, it does matter. All in favor? Excuse me, it does matter. Excuse me, it does matter. No, no you didn't. All in favor, vote for the board. If you don't want to turn, vote no, please. You're not going to do the ambulance? No? No votes at all? No, I have to write it. Thank you. Are, are you voting? I did. Stuart? I voted. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The rule is yours. No, we're not doing anything. Do we motion to adjourn the joint what? meeting? Yes. Yes. That's what we just did. Well, we never. But what about we're? Yeah, we're staying. We're well, you can come sit on the side of the table and face your loving fans and move on. Wait, before the board dismisses. Thank you. Can, can I explain something to Jeff before we go because he's confused? Okay. Did you guys vote? No, no, no. Jeff voted. I voted. No, we're done. Everyone voted. We voted. We're done. Right. No, we're done. No, we're done. Sorry for uh, holding you guys up. We ran a little late. Doing the ambulance? No, no. We decided. It was decided. I'm saying I gave them a proposal. This is the HR. I gave them a 